Hey everybody, welcome to the first edition of 5 Minute First Aid. I'm going to try to keep this within 5 minutes, but we'll just see. Well, what we're talking about today is how to treat mild to moderate cuts that you might sustain at home. Um, the first thing that we want to talk about is this. Nothing that I talk about today is going to pertain to an injury that happens to your eye, your mouth, uh, that one that involves rust, or an injury that was sustained from a bite from any other living being, humans included. So this little chart that you're already looking at and anything that I say does not pertain if you have an injury in or around your eye, same thing with your mouth, if it is a bite or if it involves rust, okay? Those are different things that we can talk about another day, but it's really important to remember that these are not the rules to go by if that's the issue you're having. All right, first things first, let's take a look at this little chart here. B-L-E-E-D, bleed. I'm going to say what each of those letters stands for, and then we're gonna go over them. B is for barrier. L is for locate and examine. E is for external direct pressure. E is for elevation. D is for dressing. Let's get into it. First of all, when it comes to barrier, in an ideal situation, if your friend got hurt at your house, you would have a pair of gloves with which to wear properly when taking care of their injury. Maybe you don't have gloves. A lot of people don't have gloves right now. So what you would do is wash your hands really, really well before you touched the injured area on them so that you don't get any of your germs in their open wound. Very, very important. Um, so that's B for barrier. L, locate and examine. L, I say also, um, is for lighting. You want to be able to really see when you're looking. So locate the actual injury, examine it. You may want to pour water, not too hot, not too cold, around it, over it, so you can really get an idea of the area. And if you need to clean off dirt, do not scrub over an open wound. You can use a warm, clean washcloth with a mild soap and wash around it to give yourself an idea of what the field looks like. The next thing I need to talk about is foreign objects. There are some different rules. I'm gonna to try to cover all of them that have to do if there is a foreign object inside your cut. Um, a piece of glass, a nail, a little piece of metal, a piece of wood, plastic, whatever might be in there, right? First things first, you wanna think about size. If it is too big and sticking in far, please leave it alone. We'll talk about that some more in a second. Um, how to get it out. If it's a little, like a little piece of glass in the bottom of your foot, well, you need to use tweezers probably if you can't get it with your clean hands. Um, tweezers need to be disinfected. Rubbing alcohol can do that. If you don't have rubbing alcohol, again, hot water and soap. You can use a magnifying glass if you need to look closer. Um, if you don't have that, you can actually, you can use your phone and zoom in to get real close so you're not shoving your face in their injury. Um, and then when you're done examining it, you're going to want to wash it and pat it dry. Just like before, pouring water over a mild soap around, pat it dry, don't rub, okay? All right, I can already see we're gonna go over time, but we'll just say five minutes is relative, okay? Let's see, what else are we talking about here with the foreign objects? Important before we move on, if the object is too big, if the object is too deep, or if it shows any resistance when you try to pull it out, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Very important, too big, too deep, resistance, leave it. If it, there's resistance at all, if something inside your body or your friend's body is trying to hold it in, pulling it out could cause more of an issue than leaving it there. So these are times at which you leave it, okay? Um, let's say for an example, let me see my tape back here. Let's say for an example, uh, you, there was a little piece of glass and it caught in your arm, you got it out, you safely washed it. What do you do next? Before you bandage it, you um, want to make sure that you're leaving it as clean as possible. And a lot of people will say um, to spray with peroxide or to use um, rubbing alcohol also. But that's not what you wanna do with an with a open cut or a gash per se, because that can um, kill the skin around it and make it less likely to be able to close up. And often it's just not necessary. So once you've got it nice and clean and as dry as possible, you just want to put an ointment on it. Um, let's see, what do I have here? My ointment has disappeared. Surprise of surprises. I had to move around a couple times to shoot this video. So 
who knows where that is now. Um, I have a triple antibiotic ointment and I also have uh, Bactroban, which was a, a prescription for a time when I had a, a larger injury that we were trying very hard to make sure did not get infected. So you might have any kind of ointment around your house. Just read it and make sure that it is an antibiotic ointment and for anybody's use, okay? If you don't wanna put like accidentally put hydrocortisone cream on there, that's another ointment type tube that could be in your first aid kit. Um, you don't want to accidentally put teething gel on there, right? When I was looking through my first aid kit, teething gel was another small tube that I saw, same size, same color as my uh, antibiotic ointment. So read labels, be calm. That's a huge thing about this. If somebody's injured, the last thing you wanna do is panic. You're trying to help them not accidentally hurt them or worry them more. So we are calmly looking through our first aid kit and getting what we need. Okay, the next thing is external direct pressure. External just means on the outside, direct means directly on it and pressure. That doesn't mean holding your hand softly on top of it. It means pushing. You're not trying to hurt them. You're trying to staunch the bleeding. If they're screaming in pain, you're probably needing to call for help, but if they just have a good little stream of blood going, you can help by holding external direct pressure on there. Steady pressure, don't be letting go and holding and letting go and holding, just leave your hand there. You of course wanna use something clean, right? And again, there's this caveat, unless there's something in the cut, do not put pressure on a cut that might have a piece of glass or metal in it. That's probably pretty obvious, but you might think, oh, I need to stop the bleeding, but you could very easily push something deeper in and cause a more serious injury than was already there. So we have to be very vigilant. Um, let's see, the next thing we're gonna talk about is this other E, elevation. What does elevation matter? Well, you wanna try to get the injury above your heart. And this is a little easier if it's something, say, on your hand. You raise your hand up, you lay and put your arm or your leg up. Um, it's, a, it's a little bit different if the injury is on your torso somewhere, but for the sake of teaching, we're going to say it's on your arm. Get the arm above the head. And the reason for this is the gravity slows down the blood flow. Your heart is pumping blood all throughout your body. Simple gravity, science, will help slow that flow because your heart has to work harder to pump blood this way. Does that make sense? It's really just simple science. And all of these are very um, self-explanatory, I feel. And they're also common sense. But sometimes when we're worried, we don't use common sense. So that's why you're thinking to yourself, why is she doing a video about basically putting a Band-Aid on a cut? That's not what I'm doing. I'm equipping you with um, information so that if some small type of emergency happens, you will have more in your head with which to meet it things you might not have thought of right away and things you might not think of if you're panicking. So injury above your heart, if you can, gravity slows down the blood flow. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the dressing. And again, we're gonna talk about that caveat with foreign objects. But first of all, um, you wanna make sure you have a clean dressing. I do have a couple, well, an example here. Um, if it's not a terribly long, wide injury and you have some of those big Band-Aids, you know, the ones that are like this size, you can use that if it's not bleeding too much, right? But the kind of injury we're talking about, if you were thinking of this video that I'm making when you're dressing an injury, it's probably not a little cut for a Band-Aid, right? It's still bleeding and you're worried. You might have in your first aid kit, something like this. Um, they're just gauze pads. They come individually wrapped. Make sure your hands are clean again when you get it out. Put it on the wound, okay? Directly on the wound, don't pull it off. Use two if you need to. Um, they say not to overdo the dressing. You wanna have a good idea of what's going on. If it's bleeding through, it may need more attention. So we don't wanna just overstuff it and then not know what's happening under all those bandages. Um, and the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do if you don't have a bandage that already has adhesive on it is to wrap it. Um, I did not have any gauze bandage wrap in the house, which is odd. I feel like I had some. I wonder if maybe there was like a, uh, a, a doll hospital or something happening with the kids because I could have sworn we had some. But for the sake of um, example, I just got this TheraBand tape that I have. This is not something that you would use um, unless you really just didn't have anything else. I'm using it because um, it's got like a sticker barrier here so I can just show you. You would wrap, you would, it's harder when it's yourself, wrap around once, 
twice maybe. Um, again, don't over wrap and do not wrap too tight. You do not want to cut off circulation. And speaking of circulation, never ever tourniquet. I'm putting this over here so we can really see it. It's on its own. It's really important. Never tourniquet. How many movies have you watched where somebody had a big old slice on their arm and um, somebody did a tourniquet using their belt or a piece of cloth or something and just tied it right there, right? So the bleeding would stop. I'm not saying that that won't stop the bleeding. I'm saying that we're not medical professionals, right? We don't know the correct placement. We don't know the correct pressure. There's a lot that goes into it. Again, this is science. So science is very simple, but it is always very specific. So if you find that you or your friend or your family member or whoever has an injury that is so large and bleeding so much that you think to yourself, I need to put on a tourniquet or all of the blood is going to go out of myself or this person, that is a call 911 moment. That is not a remember the Kirby School of Hard Knocks um, minor to moderate cut video, okay? So never tourniquet. If you feel that you need to tourniquet, call 911 immediately. Alrighty. Tip. Let's see, we talked about cleaning the dressing. We talked about not or using a clean dressing, not going too tight. Um, there's a different rule here with foreign objects. Again, if there's a great big shard of glass sticking out of your cousin's shoulder because you guys accidentally broke the sliding glass window, that's a 911 moment. But if you, let's say you've got a screw or a nail stuck in your arm or a piece of glass that you felt was too much resistance and you didn't want to pull it out, but it wasn't like a, a passing out, crying, screaming ambulance situation, right? You can kind of usually tell. Then here's, I'm going to tell you what to do. You can still do your basic cleaning. Um, where were we here? The pouring water on it, using mild soap around it, etc. And if you want to cover it up to staunch some of the bleeding happening around it, let's say our piece of glass is right here, sticking about that far, you can still do that. Then what you want to do is get some of these gauze pads or something similar and open them up, fold them, put one over, do not push down, put it over, and then the others you can sort of stack around. Now this may take more hands than you have. You might not be able to do this, but you also might. So I'm going to tell you, you can build like a little tower to either side of it and once very loosely go over it with whatever you have that's like your wrapping. No pressure at all on it. That's just a way to help keep it stable and a way to stop some of the bleeding. Also, you may need medical tape. Medical tape is a thing um, that you should have in your house. It's good for many things, you know, like putting up index cards when you ran out of regular tape. Don't worry, I'm not wasting terribly. I've got like nine bazillion rolls of this stuff. And it's for learning, right? So it's totally worth it. Anyway, yes, so if there's a foreign object in there, remember you can build up around it and you can put something over it lightly, but never, 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 never push. Alrighty, let's see. The last couple things I wanna say are other reasons why this might not be a thing. Again, I'm just gonna repeat it. Um, if the injury is near your eye, if it is in or near your mouth, if it is a bite from an animal or a human and is really bleeding, or if there's rust involved, a rusty nail, um, something rusty that was in the back of a truck bed, et cetera. Those are reasons that none of this pertains. Um, another reason is because someone might need immediate help, more professional help and quicker. So there's a difference between bleeding and spurting, right? Bleeding, the blood is coming out, it's, just, it's flowing. Spurting, it is coming out this way. You are seeing it go, let's say heartbeats go. If blood is going, pff, 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 that is an immediate help situation. Spurting, immediate help. Do still apply direct pressure, but someone is calling 911 while you're doing that. And you just hold the pressure until an ambulance were to get there. And another thing is, if your patient is unconscious, this one doesn't work if it's yourself, but um, if your patient is unconscious, then that's another reason to call. 911. Just because we never know. Again, we are learning the best that we can, but we are not doctors. And I believe I just have one more little index card here. And it's the thing that people think about a lot. It's stitches. You got to cut. Is it stitch worthy? Is it not? If it is too long or too deep, 
if it won't hold closed, the edges simply will not hold closed, um, or if the edges are ragged. There's a difference between a straight cut and, you know, kind of situation. Um, those are reasons you may get stitches. And some people opt not to. Sometimes it's a must. But if you feel like your or your friend's injury might warrant stitches, then these are the things you need to look for. Too long or too deep, won't stay closed, are the edges ragged? Once we get this all treated the way we talked about here, we can head over to the hospital. And you know that they'll be safer since you took care of them, um, but then they'll also be getting the medical care that they need. So, one more time. And this very much not five minute, five minute first aid video. Bleed, barrier locate and examine, external direct pressure, elevation, dressing. If you guys any, have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you guys on a very much not five minute first aid next time.